Hello everybody and I have just got off the stage here from being MC at the Future of Retail at the launch of the 16th Dublin Economic Monitor and I wanted to share some of the learnings that I got from the panel discussion and the various presentations. Um, so we're here at this beautiful Dublin City Hall building, it's absolutely gorgeous I have to say and uh, as you can see the hashtag behind me there was um, Dublin Economy so if any of you want to see what the conversation was all about you can go on to Twitter and you can see it there. Now, Here's what happened. No, first and foremost, to make sure you can see it there, this is the Dublin Economic Monitor. There's, this is the 16th edition of it, and it includes a wide range of statistics about the city. So, for example, we learned today that there has been uh, 33,000 people extra who are in employment in Dublin in the last 18 months. And if you look at, if you compare to when they began the Dublin Economic Monitor, which is um, now four years, there is the equivalent of Croke Park and a half uh, in the terms of the number of people who are now uh, extra in employment. For those of you who don't know where Crow Park is, it is our stadium in Ireland. And uh, on, on when it's absolutely full, it can hold up to 80,000 people. So the way in which it was described today is that it, that it now has, uh, that Crow Park and a half um, has now, are now back to, back to in incremental employment in Ireland. Um, sorry, in Dublin. Uh, the second thing as well that I thought was really interesting is that there has been 55 million journeys in Dublin on public transport. Uh, over the past year across the, the four, four different types of, of public transport that there is and the bus is the most popular. And that links in, um, in terms of the future of retail, that 53% of people use public transport for shopping. So there's a huge link there between transport, infrastructure, architecture and retail. Something else, I thought this was really interesting as well. 14% of people in Dublin use mobile payments like Apple Pay. And whatever you think about that number is one thing, but it's actually 7% in the UK. So there's more people here using uh, things like Apple Pay and so on in terms of mobile payments than in the UK. I was surprised by that as I wouldn't have expected it to be higher here and certainly uh, not double. But here's another one, right? And this, this in some ways contradicts um, that, that statistic, but I can, unfortunately I can see why. That is that there is an expectation there will be six billion, billion would it be, euro, spent in Ireland online in 2019. That's good. However, 70% of that is expected to go outside of the country. So therefore, a lot, while that money is being spent, we are a digital importer. Now, if you are somebody tuning in right now and you're thinking, oh my God, I need to do something about that. I'm not online. Um, what I would say is look at the, um, the online trading voucher that is on offer from the local enterprise office in Ireland. And they're also, uh, they're available in different guises in different programs around the world. But there is funding available to get online. There really and truly is. And I could talk more about it, but send me a message if you, if you need to know more and I, and I will tell you. Now, we didn't apply for it because we were online before they became available. But I have sent lots of people for it and it's a two and a half thousand euro voucher that that is given to you if you spend they're pulling down the stage here behind me if if you spend uh, over two and a half thousand yourself on, on your own website so a wide variety of insights I give these I recommend these to uh, to the to the teachers to the teachers as well the economics teachers because they're absolutely packed full of data really good stuff comparing Dublin with the country it looks at um, transport looks at retail looks at employment looks at earnings looks and of course residential commercial you name it the lot it's all there now also we had a panel then on the future of retail so I had done a, a variety of, of research into this and it's it's really interesting to look at, at where retail is going so the volume of sales Right, the volume of sales in terms of retail is still happening in store, but the growth is happening online. And 74% of people still prefer to go into a shop when they have time, but uh, in comparison to 24% of people prefer to shop online. Now, prefer is not the same as can. Uh, so, but the, the thing is, is that the growth is, is certainly online. Um, that was one point. The second point, data. Data, 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 data. Data is everywhere. But what I particularly heard from the panel today is that we're not using data to its greatest effect. So Yvonne was here from Ernst & Young and she was uh, particularly talking about that data is in silos. So yes, we may have a loyalty card scheme, for example, a retailer may have a loyalty card scheme, but then they're not actually using that to convey maybe with operations or with marketing or with, with whoever. Um, so that, that's what she means, that there was data in silos and we need to use this much better. So I said, yeah, but does that cost a fortune? And then she said, no, 
It doesn't have to. If you do it right, it can be done in an Excel spreadsheet. It can be done in a CRM. But that's not the point. The point is, what are you actually trying to achieve with that data? And that's that's what people need to go and to consider. Then uh, we also had Marvin Green. He is Managing Director at CHQ Building. Now, again, for any of you who don't know who that is um, in Ireland, CHQ is a building. It's a big, big uh, retail and experiential building in um, down in the Docklands in Dublin. And in it is Dogpatch Labs. Now, Dogpatch Labs is the closest thing to a Silicon Valley type of an incubation centre. You know now where there's grass on the top floor, that type of thing. Um, great, a huge thriving hub for innovation and businesses and startups, but also for events. But then they also have Epic. Now, Epic is a museum all about Ireland's past. Would you believe the first time that I went to Epic, I wasn't in physically in the building at all. I was in South by Southwest in Texas and um, somebody was there and they were trialing 3D glasses. And uh, they were actually, I walked, walked around uh, um, Epic by using those, those 3D glasses. So I actually said that they're really taking experiential to the nth degree. So and he was making that point is that retail is now an experience. We don't go because we want to have a transaction. A transaction can occur anywhere. And some retailers are offering transactions online, via text, via Instagram, via chat, you name it. It's happening from all over. So it's not, retail is not about a transaction, but it's, it's instead, it's about an experience. Then we also had um, we had um, Susanna, uh, who is a CX strategist. Now, I am going to tag all of these people on the LinkedIn post so you can talk to them directly. And Susanna, I have to say, she was probably one of the clearest people that I've ever heard speak about customer experience. She said, what we need to do, you and me, right? What we need to do is that we need to look at what happens between when we set an expectation to when we fulfill it. So, I set an expectation when I had agreed and delightfully so, when I had agreed to work with Dublin City Council to MC today's event, when I sent in the proposal about what I was going to do, that was where the expectation was. Today, I fulfilled it. And it's what happens in between that in terms of time, in terms of responsiveness, in terms of going the extra mile, in terms of thinking about things that my customer doesn't have to think about. And to me, for me to bring best practice from other people that I've worked with or other events that I've gone to, that's the bit in the middle. That's customer experience. It's not process. And it's not customer mapping. It deserves its own category. And that was her point, is that we, we particularly need, need to look at that. Then we had Eva Power as well from the Ethical Silk Company. Fabulous business. Oh my God, fabulous business. Um, she sourced her materials in, in India. And then uh, from there, she sells uh, very, uni very unique pieces online. Um, it's, uh, and particularly her whole entire ethos is about sustainability of the materials and the people working in the jobs um, who are creating the materials. And she donates 10% to, of her profit to charity, 5% uh, to Focus Ireland and 5% to a hospice in India. Now, the reason that we, she, she was talking to us is that she exclusively sells online. And it, online doesn't just mean direct, but also using an online marketplaces. And she shared her story today. And she was just talking about how the future is, of course, baseline is quality. If you don't like the job or if you don't like the service, you don't like the product, you're not going to buy it. But sustainability is becoming, uh, it's moving from a nice to have up to a must have and she, she's already there she's already there on, on that journey and then finally we had Sapan um, from Mastercard so what he showed us was heat mapping right now this is this is fantastic right so the way in which heat mapping would work in a country like our sorry again city like Dublin is they are they are seeking to pilot technology that would capture all of the point of sale transactions in the city. So if, if Dublin City Council wanted to evaluate, okay, what is the impact of a particular piece of weather? Okay, so we all know snow happened in Ireland last year, totally disruptive, but what was the impact on, on retail? Or what, what, where is the spending happening around St. Patrick's Day? Is it happening along the St. Patrick's Parade route? Is it happening in the suburbs? And how does that change in comparison to any other day? So the idea then is, is that they could take the data, not from a once-off basis, but evolving. And then what they could do is feed that data in, for example, to Dublin City Council when they're planning where they're going to put the next shopping centre. Or, let's say, if you're planning to design a retail space or terminology I learned today, extend your branch footprint, well, then you could use this information to plan from there. So I have to say, I learned a huge amount fascinating brief for me to work on but working on it for a couple of months now is brilliant and um, thanks so much to everyone at Dublin City Council for inviting me to be part of this and I have to say the future of retail it's data it's personal and it's bright thank you bye